It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Monday evening, November 20th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Crude is bullish with a channel as price tries to retest today's high. But a key level of resistance is telling me to stay patient and wait for seller failures down in the battle zone for the most reliable buying opportunities tomorrow morning. Speaking of tomorrow morning, S&P is bullish with a spike in channel pattern, telling me to look for a two-legged pullback into the battle zone for the most reliable buying opportunities on Tuesday morning. NASDAQ is also bullish after getting tossed around like a rag doll this morning, and a bull flag pattern gives me two distinct areas of interest. I'm looking for some buying opportunities right in one of two scenarios tomorrow morning. Gold is bearish, strong, strong move lower, telling me to look for short-term trading ranges tomorrow morning and selling opportunities up above that range high. Euro is also bearish and trying to retest today's low, but we're a little bit too close to a key support level on the chart, so I'm waiting for a sell or, or a bounce up into that battle zone so I can sell it right back down tomorrow. We are dealing with a holiday short week ahead of us. Got some big, got a big holiday later on this week. We got a plan for that here tonight. Uh, no time to waste. We got plenty of reliable trading opportunities setting up for Tuesday, Wednesday session, so we're going to get into that newsletter in just a moment. Before we jump in, though, I do want to remind you the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is here on our blog at SidewaysMarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry, there's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link. Come join me here on the blog at Sideways Markets for the full-length version of our nightly newsletter. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Lower left-hand corner, follow me on social, stock Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever your favorite flavor of choice. I'm always posting important charts, links, and updates throughout the week. And speaking of charts, how easy is that? You can have all the charts from tonight's video, have them on your computer ready to go tomorrow morning just follow that link that says click it to download today's charts and speaking of tomorrow morning what are you waiting for grab that free pass come out and join me as a guest in the trade room you can learn more about the free pass and grab that free pass in the upper right hand corner if you're not a member here at school of trade you definitely got to make sure you grab that free pass if you have any questions any questions about the newsletter, psychology videos, free passes, membership, whatever the questions might be, right? Hit me up on live support or just simply call the office. The number is on the homepage of the website. Let's jump right in. We got a got a holiday shortened week here this week. Looking at uh, the calendar here for the rest of the month. Well, maybe not the rest of the month here, but the rest of this week. Obviously, Thursday is the Thanksgiving Day holiday, right? That means you can expect some lower volume on. On Wednesday and a shorter window on on Friday now of course I always tell my clients and I covered this in the beginner classes here at School of Trade one of the things we do every single month at the end of each month I always look at the CME holiday calendar. So you definitely want to familiarize yourself right with this. I'll put a link on this uh, uh, below the video tonight on the blog. It's pretty easy, though. Go to Google CME group holiday calendar, holiday schedule. You'll see it'll come up pretty easily here. And, of course, this is going to be the Thanksgiving holiday, right? And what I would recommend is, is skip the Excel and go to the compact Excel, right? It does require you to convert the UTC into right into uh, EST, you know, the uh, you know London time, right, into or right, into Eastern time. But you can find converters online pretty easily there. Uh, the bottom line is that's something you definitely want to get into a habit here as you go into the holiday season, right? So definitely consult with the CME holiday calendar for Thanksgiving, Christmas, right, and of course New Year's. We'll talk more about that once, right, once Christmas comes into play. For right now, though, you just worry about, right, that Thanksgiving holiday. The bottom line basically is, is markets are, markets are closed in the U.S. on Thanksgiving. They'll be open everywhere else, as you can see. Remember, it's a, right, it's a, it's a, it's a U.S. holiday, so you'll notice no U.S. news on Thursday. But markets will be, right, markets will be closed, right, in the U.S., open elsewhere. Um, and then you'll have, again, like I said, right, Wednesday will be, you know, kind of one of those two-thirds of a day you know price action will probably go into the early hours of the afternoon before tailing off as people can run to catch flights right to go see grandma wherever they're going for the holiday and then that Friday right that's always kind of the big question mark is that Friday coming after Thanksgiving it's Black Friday you know a lot of people trade that Friday morning just remember anytime you get a Friday after you know after a major event like a Thanksgiving holiday on Wednesday 
is going to be a little bit more gamblers, you know, gambler environment than it will a professional traders environment. Professionals that don't have to be there probably won't be there on Friday. You know, one of the benefits of being a successful trader is you can take the whole weekend off, right, and not go back to work on Friday just to go right to take it off on Saturday again. So there probably not going to be as many professionals in the market, but in my experience, that Friday after the holiday is usually pretty good for a few hours, usually pretty good for a few hours. So, you know, we'll talk more about that as we, right, as we get later on. As far as my, as far as my newsletter, um, I'm going to be doing a newsletter tonight, Monday night, and tomorrow night, right? I will not have my newsletter out for you guys on Wednesday, Thursday, or of course, Friday. So a short week here for me, right? And of course, we'll come back and we'll do it again you know, same, same schedule uh, for next week. So early in, early out, you know, on, on Wednesday, off on Thursday, right? And of course, Friday being a, you know, again, kind of a, a very small window, maybe a few hours there, right? In the morning, you definitely don't want to be pushing it right too far into the afternoon session um, on Friday. What else? What else? What else? Yeah. So I'd recommend get to it early, uh, take the day off on Thursday. You know, your, your job on Thursday is basically to enjoy time with family, friends, try not to eat yourself into a complete coma, right? So you can make some money on Friday, right? And then spend it all on Amazon for their Black, and their Black Friday deals. Um, and if you don't have somebody to spend Thanksgiving with, right? If you don't have someone to spend Thanksgiving with, I would always recommend donating your time. There are plenty of soup kitchens. There are plenty of churches. There are plenty of, 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 uh, of community uh, groups that would love to have have an extra couple, uh, you know, eyes and hands and, and feet, right, to help out over Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you right now, you'll probably feel better at the end of donating your time at the end of Thanksgiving Day, right, than you would sitting there picking out watching uh, American football all day long, right, with Uncle Joe. So, you know, think about it that way. Might not be a good idea to donate your time this year if you have the time available. So now that you know the basic ideas, don't forget that CME right? Don't forget that CME holiday calendar, right? That'll be a good link there to have on your desktop handy. Whenever we start getting around holidays, right? We start to be aware of that we're going to be some market closings. Now, back to the real plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow, not much news tomorrow, as you can see. All we really have is that existing home sales number at 10 a.m. Eastern time. There's not a lot overnight tonight. There's not a lot tomorrow morning early in the session. So really the meat and potatoes tomorrow Right on top of that 10 o'clock, top of the hour, we already expect to see, just so you guys know, I don't need any major news at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I'm always expecting to get some big movement around 10 a.m. We call that the 10 o'clock shock in our trade room, right? And we definitely, it definitely lives up to its name, let's put it that way. So we always tend to look for that volatility around 10 a.m. And with, with, with the home sales number tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., I do expect that to be the shot in the arm to send us into lunch and hopefully, right, keep us moving for the balance of the day tomorrow. So full day tomorrow, probably the the last full day of the uh, of the week and of course uh wednesday right wednesday of course it's gonna be an early in early out scenario thursday off right and friday being that small sliver right on friday morning all right so now that you know the overall holiday plan Right, and again, don't forget newsletter on Monday and Tuesday this week. I will not be sending a newsletter out on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. They do let me out of my cage every once in a while here at School of Trade. I've worked my butt off the last few months, so I am uh, definitely due for a bit of a break from the desk. Bottom line, we got some charts to cover tonight: crude, S and P, Nasdaq, gold, and of course, we can't forget about the mighty euro. Starting off tonight with crude oil. Crude is bullish after reacting to last Friday's spike in channel patterns. See that battle zone, right? Right down around that 56 right even area but we're trading at resistance right now at this point so my plan is to look for a pullback into the battle zone followed by seller failure for buying opportunities going back up to retest today's high notice that i said seller failure that's the key right now it's important to recognize the strength of this move lower this morning that may drag this price back down to retest 55.75 and if that happens we know this bull move was nothing more than a short covering rally and we'll then resume looking for selling opportunities as we did for most of the time this morning in the trade room so big picture right now spike up on friday i'm not sure if you guys recall this on friday friday was a long time ago i understand Right, but last Friday we closed. We closed Friday at the high of the week. Man, what a run coming out of last Friday's session. 
So a bull spike in channel, what does a spike in channel tell me? A bull spike in channel tells me, look at the base of that channel, the first pullback, to the base of that channel, and look where these, right, look where this market pulled all the way back to and then starts to bounce. So if you ever watch my newsletter or if you're an intermediate member or if you're an advanced member, right, you know that anytime we have a nice spike in channel, right, we always look for, right, that deep, deep pullback into that, right, kind of that battle zone as I call it, which is really the base of this channel, right? It's the first deep pullback and then right where that channel line, right, connects with, right, that spike going higher. It's usually where that bear move turns into a bull move going back up to retest the high. So buyers now are trying to go back up and retest that 56.93. If they can get through the 93, then we start looking at the measured move up top there, 57.30, 57.29, right? Give or take a few ticks there, right? That'll be the next target. But right now, though, the big objective for the bulls is to get up, right, to retest that high. Now, one of the things, one of the items on my checklist, and we provide cheat sheets and checklists to all of my clients, is I always like to think in terms of, before you do anything, just put yourself in the shoes of the opposite side of the market. And I want to do that with you right now. Today, as the market collapsed off that high, right? If you recall, today actually began as a range and then strong breakdown. It turned into a trend. Pretty interesting scenario there. Don't see that very often. But bottom line though is this was also probably seen as a spike and channel as well. Pretty significant move lower. In fact, you can see it only tested the moving average once about 10 a.m. on the way down, right? So it's, it's pretty easy to see there was a real strong, strong move lower. Now, if you were a seller, where would you be looking to sell? Well, I'd be looking to sell back around prior swings. You know, it also looks like this is probably about halfway. Yeah, it's probably about halfway off that high, right? So we have to assume there's going to be some bears up here. I think the bulls have control right now, but I think it's very important that we put ourselves in the shoes, right, of those of the opposite side of this market, not necessarily the counter trend traders, but the opposite side. If I was a seller, yeah, I'd be looking to sell right here. So buying here is not a very good idea. I want to let those bears try once. I want to let them try twice, and then once they fail, I'm looking for this move to go back up right, and retest those high. Again, notice I said seller failure because a lot of times, you know, this really doesn't have a lot of proof yet for those buyers, right? We always talk about the fact that, you know, for example, we see this big, strong move higher here. The buyer's big, strong bounce. They get good distance away from the moving average, right? The sellers came down. They took it back today with big, explosive moves away from the moving average. If I'm going to be really confident in this being a bull market, I need to see explosiveness from the buyers taking control of that market, right? So we are, we're just right there. I think the context of the market gives a lot of buyers that little bit of an edge they need coming off of that battle zone, right? To go up one try, two try, right? And then finally, after a pullback here, finish off this move back up to the high. So my buying plan for tomorrow, going with the buyers back up to retest the high, I anticipate those bears coming in above that swing. I'm also anticipating they're going to want to run this price back down to that 55 and three quarters. So I'm going to let them take some rope, just enough to hang themselves, and then look for the buy from there. I'm expecting price to pull back. Right now, that pullback, I want to see sellers try again. And once we see the sellers try twice, why twice? Because over the years, I've realized and I've noticed that, you know, trading is just like anything else in human nature. Most, most humans will try things once, then they'll gear up again and they'll try again. But if they don't succeed after that second time, the vast majority of human beings won't try a third, fourth, or fifth. That's why success is so difficult for a lot of people because they refuse to get up off the ground and try a third time. So that translates right into price action that we see on the charts. So as the market goes lower, I'm expecting the market to go lower right now. I'm expecting buyers to take some profit. I'm expecting the sellers to come in and try to sell off this high. I'm expecting those bears to try once, try twice. And if we do see them try twice and fail, I'm looking for that buy 
after that second attempt to go lower. Now, this could have a lot of different ways to look at it. For example, it could pull back with a trend line, one try, two try, use that trend line, right? Use that trend line to go back up. We've got some rising support coming in here as well, right? So there's a many different ways we could do this. Or it could be just simple straight seller failure, right? One try, two try, W pattern off the low, right, into pullback, and we're gone, right? This could easily be a W pattern off that trend line, the battle zone, and then, of course, breakout pullback, right, back up to retest that high. From CME holiday group, or the CME group, holiday calendar, uh, holiday short and week this week. Check the holiday calendar, bookmark it for the rest of the year because we are going into the holiday season, right, as you probably have heard, right, on the, on the television set. And, of course, uh, right, don't forget, if you want to come out and join me tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we open up our trade room. If you want a free pass to the trade room, make sure you join that free trial on the whole page of schooloftrade.com. You'll learn all about our trading strategy. You'll learn all about what it means to be a client, and you'll get a free pass. Come on, join me right in the trade room. It's right on the home page here at schooloftrade.com. There's a link below the, the, uh, the YouTube video. And don't forget, don't forget, while you're here, check out our beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes. We do have flexible payment options as we go into the end of the year. Questions? I hope you got some questions. I got lots of answers for you. Any questions, hit me up on live support right on the right-hand side of the website. What do you guys like about that psychology section I'm doing right now? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Right? What do you love most? What do you hate most about it? Right? I would love to get some feedback. What do you like most? What do you hate most? What would you change? Right? Or what should I do more of on my newsletter? What should I do more of on my psychology videos? As always, guys, thanks for being here. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. Be here tomorrow. I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.